Hey everybody, Ty Metalhead Weatherman here. Hopefully everyone's doing well. Hat's a little bit uneven here. So, that being said, it's ironic that uh, yesterday we were talking about the tropics and how things are currently quiet right now. You can almost say it's the polar opposite in regards to severe weather season. June is not n always known for being a super active month. Well, actually it is, but a lot of people don't acknowledge it as such, I should say. But... We're looking pretty busy right now as we have slight risk today, tomorrow. Tuesday may get upgraded to a slight risk. And then we have a day four and day five slight risk issued as well. I do think that the threat's going to be a little different than what we've been seeing over towards April and May. I know we've been dealing with a lot of tornadoes as of late. We can still see more of those. But I think we're going to start to see more in the way of damaging winds as time goes on here. Pattern kind of is favoring it a bit more. We aren't seeing the mega troughs like we've been seeing over the course of April and May here, but you don't always have to have those in order to get significant severe weather. I do have my concerns as we go later throughout the week. As far as today's setup is concerned, we have an isolated area where we could see increased chances of severe weather. So over towards the Ozarks, we have central and maybe west central parts of Arkansas in the mix going all the way through parts of northern Mississippi and northwest Alabama. We even have a small portion of southwest Tennessee, including the city of Memphis in the mix here. Main threats tonight, wind, hail. Wouldn't expect too much more beyond that point. Then on the following day, we start to look towards the western high plains again for some insanity. So over towards Rapid City, we have Scotts Bluff, Nebraska in the mix as well. We also have Sturgis. South Dakota, Rapid Valley, and then we even have parts of eastern Wyoming in the mix too for the potential severe weather. There is actually a 2% tornado threat with this system tomorrow, but the main threats are going to be of course wind and hail. I'm always leery of hail over here towards these regions because these areas tend to produce some of the largest hail, like some of the records for the largest hailstones in the U.S. have been mainly found more so over towards this region so it'll be interesting to see how things pan out i don't think we're going to have any record setting events tomorrow but nonetheless though you always have to keep an extra close eye on this region here then as we go towards the day three outlook right now this is a marginal risk but i would not be surprised considering how much energy is usually within texas during this time of year whenever a storm system comes through that we get a small slight risk to pop up here, if not more than that, possibly. But anywhere from Amarillo all the way to Waco and areas in between like Lubbock, Abilene, and Midland, there is a chance of severe weather as we get into Tuesday. Now, things get more interesting as we get towards the day four outlook where we're starting to shift a little bit from the Western High Plains, a little bit more into the Great Plains and maybe even the Midwest here. We have parts of eastern South Dakota, parts of western Minnesota. We have parts of western Iowa and eastern parts and northeastern parts of Nebraska in the mix again for severe weather. I do think we could see all hazards, but I'm mainly kind of leaning towards damaging winds. And as we go towards day five, it's a lingering threat from the previous day. So. I do think that we will probably see some type of convective system as to what that may be at this time is still uncertain. I'm kind of leaning towards either mesoscale or quasi linear, but we'll see if that ends up being the case or not. I will probably make a video getting into that as we go down the line here. But in any case though, we're gonna be keeping an eye on these two areas as we go beyond that point and even the days after because predictability is still too low. It's never it's never really gotten to a point where potential was too low at any point, even as we got out of the month of May. So we're, we're still in a pretty active pattern, just maybe not as a significantly active pattern as what we've been seeing over the last couple of months here. Like I said, you don't really need a mega trough to produce significant severe weather. It usually helps having a mega trough to increase the amount of coverage for severe weather. And like I said, we don't really have that right now. But in any case, though, as we continue to go forward here, we're looking at our storm systems for today. Here's some of our indicators here. Even though we're looking at the wrong level, I can kind of see a little bit of a look as to where our short waves are. 
if this lines up really well we're likely to see severe weather right around sunset or just a little bit after and this is for tonight so we head into tomorrow we see another storm system pop up over here this is our western high plane setup and then as we go into the following day here we do have a couple indicators for maybe some storm development over here towards texas i do think that that's going to be a uh, mid to late afternoon threat it could linger into the late afternoon maybe early evening but i do think that with the lack of forcing weak wind shear it's gonna stay pretty limited for the most part and i think that's the biggest reason why we haven't seen an upgrade in regards to this setup here but if things can ramp up which they surely can by tuesday we could have something here to look at like i said mainly thinking hail more than anything else over here forcing isn't that impressive then as we go towards wednesday afternoon wednesday evening have a couple indicators showing the potential storm development shortwave and the uh, main point of interest really seem like it would be more towards southern minnesota here and also over towards northern iowa but we'll have to see how these storms initiate and then progress as they go forward as we go beyond that point though like i said it really looks like uh, we don't get a more impressive setup the following day so i do think that these end up lingering into the evening and overnight over through parts of nebraska and iowa and we just end up having an overnight early morning severe threat the threat looks like it starts to pass as we get towards thursday afternoon thursday evening there is one other thing i want to make note of here actually a couple of things to go along with that severe weather threat and i've been kind of talking about in the last couple of videos is this little system that keeps on popping up over here on the um on the operational runs i don't see the same kind of pickup in the um in the ensemble runs so i don't think this is necessarily going to be anything tro of a uh, tropical entity but what this is going to effectively do it's going to this ridge that develops right here is going to get pushed out to the east because of this system this could uh increase the uh shower and storm chances over here out towards the southwest which is good news for them it's also a wildfire season here so maybe if things go right here we can maybe limit the wildfires a little bit but this is going to warm up areas out to the east as time goes on it's going to help push this ridge off and kind of almost create a little bit of a block here for the southeast which has been getting a lot of rain but now there won't be anywhere to run from those temperatures and if you're someone like me who works outside as a day job yikes in any case though it's going to start to get pretty hot over here towards the southeast in particular still have plenty of chances for storms out here towards the northern plains in particular the pattern's not really going to slow down too much and there may even be a couple of severe chances even over towards canada as we go forward but mainly at this point this looks like it's this pattern is going to be the new normal at least for the short term as we continue to go forward here see this ridge continuing to build over the eastern half of the u.s eventually it even migrates towards the central part of the u.s here and this is where i start to think we get to see those severe weather chances north of the border maybe some off chances over towards the dakotas maybe towards wyoming and beyond but eventually we do have to watch for a player that pops up over here towards the gulf as time goes on it's not the most well-defined character but this does help kick that ridge out if this holds because look what time we are looking at now look at the time frame we're looking at 372 hours out right towards the end of the gfs model run here this isn't even showing up on the euro as of right now either of course the euro only goes to 240 hours but in any case though if this comes into play this could be our first tropical entity of the year in the gulf at least and there are other chances that we kind of talked about yesterday in the video make sure you use that as one reference if you'd like but in any case we do look like we're going to have a couple of interesting pattern flops here over the course of the next few days so as we continue to go forward here we're going to go ahead and take a look at what our short waves are looking like at this point these are going to be some of our key lifting mechanisms in the days and really the next week ahead in particular in regards to our severe weather threats further out we go the less confidence i have in this because short waves are very variable in regard to 
how these kind of develop over time so once you get past a certain time frame trying to forecast what a short wave is going to do <laughs> good luck but in any case here I do have pretty solid confidence in these developing over here towards the Western High Plains and of course tonight's setup as well. It's relatively good confidence. As time goes on here, we see a little, little bit more activity, a little bit more stout activity over here towards Minnesota, Iowa. And the interesting thing to make note of here is this starts earlier in the day than what I would have expected. but. When you get wind storms like this, and this does look like it has a linear look to a linear mode for sure. I do have my thoughts as to whether or not we'll end up seeing all hazards severe weather, but I do think damaging winds will be the main threat with this setup here. So continue to go forward. So we go into the following day. We don't really see much in the way of short waves, which again kind of reinforces my thought process to there being mainly a threat for the um, early part of Thursday morning, maybe into mid Thursday morning at best. Well, 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 like I said, we'll have to see how things pan out from that point. Getting up to 100 hours out, you can start to get a little bit more dodgy when you're trying to forecast a short wave here. You can do long range forecasting on it again, like I mentioned before, but it's a little tricky. You can kind of see a little activity over here towards the Western High Plains once again. So mainly towards Colorado, New Mexico, also Panhandle, Oklahoma, and Texas could go, come into play as well. After that point, you can just see a lot more activity kind of pushing more towards the Northern Plains states as we go forward. Have to keep an extra close eye on this region, especially towards the Dakotas as we go throughout the rest of the month here. So another key component to severe weather, of course, moisture returns. I don't know why this sounding's up. But in any case, though, as far as tonight, tomorrow, setups are concerned. Here we are with our moisture return for today. Not really surprising to see good numbers here. Lack of forcing is really going to help keep that tornado threat down. That and the lack of low-level jet. And then as we continue to go forward, this is the look for tomorrow's setup. Moisture return is a little bit um, subpar at best, if, you, if I were to say so myself. So I wouldn't be super concerned, but you, anywhere towards where we can get these six degree dew points might have a shot at maybe some storms potentially kind of rooting themselves to the surface keep in mind tornadoes are more surface based events damaging winds and hail you can be a little bit more elevated but in any case though as we continue to move forward moisture return for tuesday not surprising to see abundant moisture over here towards texas i'm really in, i'm actually going to go ahead and look at this qt here so I can get a look at what our instability could be like. And even then, actually the numbers are quite marginal considering that Texas usually has a lot of convective available potential energy. I do think forcing is a big part of the reason why we aren't seeing that right now. But in any case though, as so we continue to go forward, this is getting into Wednesday. Look at the moisture return here. I do think those crops are starting to kick in with the corn sweat here. If anyone wants to know what corn sweat is, click that link to the top right hand corner for that. But moisture returns are definitely kicking in. Definitely looks like it's coming from the crops. And this is going to help aid the severe weather threat as we get into Wednesday and Thursday here. So we go into the following day. We do actually get a pretty solid area of moisture over here too, which is interesting. We'll see if that ends up panning out. But as time goes on, eventually we start to see those those hefty dew points here. Those very saturated environments head over towards the southeast in particular, the plain states as time goes on here. So the Gulf of Mexico moisture hose is still in effect here, so to speak, even though we aren't getting as much of a pull as what we've been seeing. I do also think that the crops and the corn sweat transpiration is coming into play as well. As we continue to go forward as the pattern begins to change, we're starting to see that moisture really work its way further up to the north. Again, thinking more so crops than anything else, but also Gulf of Mexico moisture is still unchallenged here at this point, even with that southeast ridge, which is something that I find very interesting. Hopefully it'll help keep some of us cool over here towards the southeast as time goes on here. But in any case though, 
looking at our moisture returns and our temperatures like I said severe weather is not only going to be a possibility but that big pattern change I'm talking about you're gonna see the temperatures really start to ramp up as we go forward here this is heading into later today getting into to the mid 90s for a large part of the southern u.s as a whole getting into those triple digits out west even and then as we continue to move forward here watch how these temperatures start to really pick up as we get later into the week this is less looking at tuesday afternoon getting back into the 90s again for southeast getting into the mid to upper 90s over here even all the way towards the kansas colorado line here and then here's some of those triple digits starting to come in across the board and we're going to see that begin to increase in coverage here as we get towards the middle of the month. And as we go beyond that, that heat only seems to expand. The heat dome is going to start to build once that ridge begins to come in. And the big winner or loser, depending on how you look at it, is really going to be over towards the deep south. We're going to see plenty of days where we could be getting into the 80s and the 90s. So excessive heat watches and heat warnings could come into play here as we go forward so make sure you have plenty of water plenty of electrolytes if you aren't doing anything outside best thing to do would be to try to avoid especially if you have heart conditions so we go beyond that point so last thing we're going to do real quick is go ahead and take a look at what our models could be looking like as we go forward from here so like I said, mainly going to be seeing a lot of our concentrated storm activity for tonight over towards the Ozarks. So we go forward beyond that point, Western High Plains, Texas again. We go beyond that point. Eventually, we start to see the Midwest come into play. Florida is going to start to see a lot more action over the course of the next five days here in regards to rain. There have been some of you that have been actually in my comment section talking about some of the drought concerns here. So this could be a welcome sight for some of you. It's mainly going to be centered towards the southern peninsula of Florida. If you're over towards the panhandle, you might stay a little bit more dry for a little bit longer. But eventually you guys do start to come into play. Then as time goes on here, especially with that Gulf of Mexico moisture starting to come in. If we get any kind of force, we can still get storms to fire here. Even with that ridging, I still think there will be chances of thunderstorms, but not much in the way of concentrated thunderstorm development until maybe to when this character comes into play, if it comes into play. This is looking at a storm system that hasn't even developed yet, so I'll have to see what this looks like as time goes on here, but I am interested in seeing how the forecast evolves with this and progresses with this system. This could be our first tropical entity of the year, might see something even before then but i think that this might have the best chance so far keep in mind though 16 days out a lot can happen with this but like i said all we can do is just wait and see because we're in no man's land kind of stuck in the limbo here with that being said i hope you guys enjoyed this video and you found it useful if you did make sure you smash that like button hit that subscribe button make sure you get that notification bell on as well and share the channel as well 99 subs away from a thousand it's been an incredible two-year run to start things out and i would love to get there before november or at least before the channel hits three years old we'll be here for much longer than that regardless but any help that you guys can give will be awesome that being said guys take care thank you again and i will see you very soon tire metal at weatherman signing out for tonight